No one has figured it out. A great uh, English scientist by the name of Sir Arthur Eddington, he said the best explanation is that something unknown is doing we don't know what. <laughs> we have no idea of the origins of consciousness. The materialistic interpretation is uh, not valid anymore. There are scientists like Sir Roger Penrose, who was the thesis advisor of uh, Stephen Hawking, who suggest that consciousness is actually a fundamental activity of the universe at Planck scale space-time geometry. Planck scale meaning 10 to the power of minus 33 centimeters, or 25 times smaller in order in magnitude than an atom. So if you go smaller, smaller, smaller to Planck scales and to what you might call the basement of the universe, everything disappears. You end up with a nothingness, a void. And so the big question is, what is this emptiness from where the whole universe is constantly arising and into which it is constantly subsiding? So people like Penrose and many others, in fact, we have a conference coming up called Sages and Scientists at our center in another 10 days where we're bringing together some of the greatest scientists of the world to talk about the mystery of consciousness. But there's a number of scientists who are suggesting that at Planck scale space-time geometry, at that level, um, everything disappears. Matter, energy, uh, space-time, the world of objects, and what you get is a field of possibilities which has the fundamental building blocks uh, of the material universe as possibility. Spin, charge, space-time, gravity, but only as possibility, not as things themselves. And at that level, there is also platonic truth, which is uh, things like mathematical truth and musical truth and um, truth, goodness, beauty, harmony, evolution. And uh, therefore, the fundamental levels of the cosmos contain the building blocks, both of matter and of mind. And that our personal consciousness is a little drop in the ocean of consciousness. So, you know, Sufi mystics like Rumi say, you're not just a drop in the ocean, you're the ocean in the drop. So uh, this is where science is taking us right now. That our consciousness, that part of us, us, that manifests as our mind and as our body, that projects itself as the body, and then the environment is actually non-local. Non-local means it does not exist in space-time. That it exists um, as a transcendent entity which is outside of space-time. So right now, as you're uh, listening to me, try this. As you're listening to me, turn your attention to the listener. So as you're listening to me, just become aware of who's listening. And if you feel some kind of awareness, the subject of experience, that's your soul. It's not your mind, which might be saying, I wish I'd gone to the bathroom before the lecture, or whatever else. There's a consciousness, a presence, an awareness in which thoughts come and go, in which perceptions come and go, in which um, ideas come and go, in which uh, the molecules of your body come and go. And so the great wisdom traditions of the world, particularly in the East, have said, hold on to that presence, it's the only part of you that's real. Because everything else is, is a impermanent pattern of behavior of that consciousness. So when you were a baby, that consciousness was there, it's there now, it was there when you were a teenager, it'll be there when you're an old person. And because it's transcendent and does not exist in space-time, um, it's eternal. And it's part of an impersonal, um, field of awareness, which is a field of possibilities, which is uh, proliferating with uncertainty because the laws of nature disappear here, which uh, is a field of correlation, infinite harmony in as part of the universe. That's why we call it universe, one song, okay, one symphony. It's a field of intentionality. It's a field of creativity. That's the worldview I hold personally, 
And that's the basis of everything I do, whether it's medicine or teaching uh, business school or uh, teaching people the, the principles behind intuition and creativity and all of that. That your brain is actually um, a place that represents events that happen in consciousness. And that consciousness is the source of all the things that make us um, very different in that, uh, from other animals, in that we have the capacity for self-awareness. We ask ourselves questions like, who am I? Where did I come from? Do I have a soul? Does God exist? Uh, the fact that we have insight and intuition and imagination and creativity and freedom of will, these are not attributes of neural networks, which are basically you know, just networks. They're neurons, they're physical things. And networks don't experience time or the past or the future or have aspirations and longings. Now, having said that, every event that you experience in consciousness does have a representation in the brain. So, uh, in the next five minutes, I'm going to make you all experts on uh, neuroscience. So, if, um, if this was your brain, let's say, uh, you can make a fist. The wrist represents the spinal cord, okay? Um, this part of the thumb, the base of the thumb here, represents something called the reptilian brain. The limbic brain is inside, but the reptilian brain is also called the midbrain. It evolved around 300 million years ago. So if you are close to a reptile, and you make a sudden noise or a sudden movement, uh, the reptile has something called a startle response. It'll, if you're very close, it'll attack you. If you're a little further away, it'll slither away. And this has become, over evolutionary time, it has become what is called the fight or flight response, which means when an animal is threatened, uh, it either attacks or it runs. So when I was in medical school, the way we remember the functions of the reptilian brain, because it has other functions as well, were the four Fs, feeding, fighting, fleeing, and uh, reproduction. Okay, <laughs> so this is, and it's all totally automatic. There's, there's no thinking involved, it's reflexive. Now if you open your fist up like this, then you see where my thumb is here. This inside of the brain is called the limbic brain which is our emotional brain. And when we feel connected, then the limbic uh, system is functioning well. Uh, we experience love and compassion, and we experience goodness, we experience kindness, we experience joy, we have equanimity or peace of mind. And you can see that when you're having those experiences, the limbic brain actually is firing very coherently. When you feel disconnected or you feel fearful or you feel threatened, then the limbic brain um, gets totally discoherent and uh, you experience things like hostility, resentments, anger, uh, fear, uh, shame, guilt, depression. Uh, the limbic uh, system is not working properly. Okay, this is 100 million years old. The first one is 300 million years old. And then you have this huge part, this is the cortical brain, okay, which is only 4 million years old in evolution. So it's brand new, this part of our brain. And uh, this part of our brain, uh, which as I said is 4 million years old, and it grew explosively in the last 15,000 years. First with oral language, which is using noises to communicate with each other, and then with written language, uh, which is only 5,000 years old, which means using squiggles to communicate with each other. And now with the internet, which is since 1995 commercially, only 15 years old, we are seeing a very rapid, explosive growth of this part of the brain. In fact, children who play with um, video games and are good at digital technology, you can see that the neural networks are growing so fast that it would have taken a hundred years of evolution to do that in a few months. So we are now through technology, literally, seeing the explosive growth of this part of our brain, the cortical brain, 
which has self-awareness and can actually override the, the, the midbrain and can heal the limbic brain so that one feels positive emotions. And this is giving us great insight into where the future of self-repair systems, because all biological systems know how to heal them, self-repair, self-evolve, self-regulate. So since I have this opportunity and I don't want to miss it, I'm going to just show you a couple of things. I'm going to take you through, can I do that? Take you through a little bit of meditative experience. So put your feet on, on, the, um, on the ground with your feet firmly planted. I sit relatively erect. Just five minutes and I'll show you the power of consciousness, okay? And take your hands and uh, open them up and put them in your, um, in your lap like that. And close your eyes and bring your awareness first into your heart, which is right in the center of your chest. And for a minute or so, experience gratitude, which is uh, think of all the things for which you are grateful for. Your family, your friends, etc. All the things that you would count as your blessings. Now think of um, people in your life that you feel great love for. Okay, now leave all that and just observe your breath. Just observe it as it goes in and out. And notice that as you observe it, it spontaneously starts, starts to slow down. And now you can mentally tell your breath to slow down even more. Slow down. Now bring your awareness into your heart and see if you can listen to your heartbeat. See if you can sense your heartbeat either as a sound or a sensation. Just focus and see if you can sense your heartbeat as a sound or a sensation. And now move your awareness from your heart into your open hands, into your fingertips, and see if you can bring your heartbeat into your hands. Can you feel the throbbing of your heartbeat in your hands? Increase the temperature of your hands. See if you can feel some warmth or tingling or throbbing in your fingers. Now bring your awareness into your face and see if you can transfer your heartbeat to your face and increase the blood flow in your face. Feel some warmth in your cheeks. And now just scan your total body quickly. So go over the limbs, the legs, the feet, the shoulders, the knees, the hips, the spine, the neck. Now bring your awareness into your abdomen, into your stomach, intestines. Into your lungs. as they expand and contract, and back into your heart. Relax into your body. And take a minute to open your eyes.